Hey everybody, welcome to our show, Beats and MCs. I'm your host, Bonzel Trill. And I'm your co-host, Dalton Pritt. And this is our first episode, so we're just kind of lay down the law real quick. This is going to be a show about hip-hop where we discuss current hip-hop, po- uh, the history of hip-hop, and just general hip-hop in general. It's all about hip-hop. 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 So, uh, to start off, we're just going to talk about what we're going to do in the show. And what we're going to do is... Okay, well, actually, how we should start this off first, Bonzo, is we should we should just tell everyone, you know, how what our relationship to hip-hop is. You know, my, my relationship to hip-hop is I'm a music producer and a rapper, and I've been doing it since freshman year of high school. And I'm actually going to college for music production. So, like, all I listen to is hip-hop. Uh, Bonzo, what, what, what's your relationship, man? Like, give, give me a little bit of lowdown on what you like. Well, I'm just a hip-hop fan and your manager. So, I just like hip-hop in general. I like all kinds of music, but hip-hop is definitely my passion out of music. And I just love talking about it. That's true. You've been my, my supporter since day one, slash day manager one. since day one. Day one. So, uh, on to the next... <clears throat> next little portion is we'd like to talk since it's the first show and we kind of gave you a background of what we're about we're going to give you a little bit of background about what hip hop's about now it started out in where bonzo what tell us where it started out where did it originate okay, a little so bit so the origin origins of hip hop you go back to 1970s in the bronx there's this hip hop rapper from jamaica he was not a rapper yet but he would throw these big block parties in the bronx where everyone would, they'd close off the streets and everyone would get together and just listen to music in the streets. And from there, they would start playing these funky beats where they would take from uh, jazz. And, break beats, break yeah, beats. Yeah, break beats. They would take from like jazz and uh, like just kind of funk music. And they would all get together, and that's when they would start rapping. They would just like talk real fast and real slick and would rhyme everything and together, and people would go crazy. And they would have a DJ that would uh, scratch records and everything. And it was just real interesting. It was a new way of music. Actually, the uh, the first the the person who invented the the record scratch is actually Grandmaster Flash. He um he invented it just by it was just really kind of just like a thing that ha- like came to his head. He was he just put his finger on the vinyl while it was spinning, and he picked his finger up, put it down, picked it up, put it down, and he just noticed that he could he could um kind of scratch like and it sounded dope. And then he could have a break beat with the exact same break beat, just loop and loop and loop, and people could uh, just dance to it. Or you had people that come in and they'd like talk over it and they'd they'd rhyme on top of the break beats and everything. And um, actually, <clears throat> it was like a really new thing that was introduced. And um, the first person who actually started. Um, the the first person who really is known as the father of hip hop, in fact, before all of this, is DJ Cool Herc, and he was the original breakbeat um, person. And he he's from Jamaica, and he came in and he um, would have these records play of different like drums and like bongos and stuff, and he they'd just be breakbeats, and he'd have them loop and loop, and people would it was like a one one small club that was like in the Bronx, and it was just a huge hit, like, people liked it, and then it kind of expand, expanded from there, but, uh, they, they basically, they gave, they give the birthplace of hip-hop, which is officially known as, uh, 1520 Sedgwick Ave, which is in the Bronx, and, um, basically from that point, like, from where a lot of famous people were born, were born from there, um, from there is where hip-hop originated and is known has become the icon of where it is now in fact if i suggest that anybody out there who's like listening to this to uh go check out the show or the netflix series called uh evolution of hip-hop which is actually gives you like a whole lowdown on the whole thing on kind of how it all started and it's really really good documentary i definitely would suggest checking it out if you're into hip-hop which i hope you are because that's why you're listening to this all right, so um, just so we show you, and, and you know, if you've ever listened to the like early hip hop, if you're an early hip hop fanatic, and you're always talking about like, oh, hip hop nowadays isn't the same as it used to be, you know, there's um, it, it's changed a lot since modern hip hop. When hip hop first started, 
it was mostly about it was just considered party music. There was nothing really uh, politically like uh, controversial or anything like that. It was, people would just play it for parties to have a good time. And then once we get to the golden age of hip hop, which starts around 1984, it becomes a lot more political, and people are rapping and everything, and they're talking. They have big points they want to get across. It becomes a lot more Afrocent- Afrocentrical, and I like that word. Big yeah. word. Good, <laughs> good stuff. And it becomes a lot more themed, and there's a lot of life and soul into it. It's more than just party music at this point. And some big uh, artists of the golden age are like N.W.A. We have um, the but, Sugar. No, we got yeah, Sugar Hill Gang. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, like Tupac. We have Biggie Smalls, uh, Nate Dogg, just a lot of classic rappers in that area. Yeah, they um. In fact, the first commercially, um, it's it's good. I like that you mentioned Sugar Hill Gang because they actually had like the first the first commercially successful rap song, which was uh, "Rapper's Delight," which we're actually gonna gonna play for you now. So um, just enjoy, so you can get a little taste of the old days. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. Friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. Or to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. But first, I gotta bang, bang, the boogie to the boogie. Say, up, jump, the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie. Let's rock. You don't stop. Rock the rhythm, and I'll make your body rock. Well, so far, you've heard my voice, but I brought two friends along. And next on the mic is my man, Hank. Come on, Hank, sing that song. Check it out. I'm the C-A-S-N, the O-V-A, and the rest is F-L-Y. You see, I go by the code of the doctor of the mix. These reasons, I'll tell you why. You see, I'm six foot one, and I'm tons of fun, and I dress to a T. You see, I got more clothes than Muhammad Ali, and I dress so viciously. I got bodyguards, I got two big cars, I definitely ain't the whack. I got a Lincoln Continental, and a son who Cadillac. All right, normally we'd let that song play through, but this is just a demo, so quick version. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so since that was the since this is the first episode, you know, we went through basically the beginning of hip hop. Um, so now we're gonna start getting to a, a couple of the segments that we're gonna start going through on the show. Um, one of them, one of them being, one of them being uh, recent albums that have actually been released. Um, and Recently, recently, there was a Big Sean album that was released called I Decided, and there was also a Migos album released called Culture, which are the two biggest albums that we, like, two commercially successful albums that have dropped uh, in the past couple weeks. Um, Big Sean was, I, I'm, Jerry, did you, Bonzo, did you listen to it a little bit, um... Big Sean's album. I only listened to like the fourth song. Um, did you really? Yes, give it a I've been listening to the Big Sean album quite what, a bit. What do you it, What do you think about it? It is not my favorite Big Sean album, but I do enjoy it. I find it very fun to just t- chill to, and uh, the concept is kind of interesting too because the concept is it's Big Sean as an uh, old man looking back at his life and what he would have done di- differently with a second chance, and he's just looking back at his life, seeing what he would have done differently, talk to his mom more, treat his girls better maybe like spend more time with the family and stuff like that. And it's just a very unique uh, perspective and take on this album that I find it interesting. And a lot of the, while the beats may sometimes be similar, there's enough difference between to keep you entertained. And there's also a couple of great features on this album, like Eminem is featured, Migos is featured. Uh, I believe um, uh, Jeremiah is featured. So there's, there's a couple of great features on this song. And a couple of the songs are really like great and unique. Like "Inspire Me" is a great song. Uh, I look at that and it actually gives me some inspiration. It's about Big Sean's mom and how what the effect her life was on him. And it's hmm. just it's just interesting to listen to because like he is just he's just showing his appreciation for his mom. And the album as a whole, I think it's unique. Um, it's a good listen. I I, it's, I recommend it highly. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, cause uh, I I mean I'm a big Big Sean. Big Sean fan, and I actually I really liked his album um, Hall of Fame. I really liked um, 
was it Dark Sky Paradise? Yes. I really like that one. What? Where do you think this one ranks in his albums that like he's released um, over his career? I would say this is my third favorite Big Sean album. Okay. I would put Hall of Fame and Finally Famous both before this album. Yeah. And then I would put I Decided as the third album. And then right after that, I would put Dark Sky Paradise. Yeah, you know, I actually kind of agree with you on that. I mean, I haven't listened to I Decided a whole bunch, but... um. I do agree that Dark Sky Paradise wasn't my favorite one out of all of his that he when he when he came out with it but um he did have a he you know he still pulls through like he still comes out with good songs and stuff. Um and actually um did you listen to the Migos album at all? Yes, Closer? I did. That was a good album. What do you and think? And as that? many of you from OU know that recently Migos has been added to the Numbers Fest. Oh yeah. And I'm sure I many of that. us are excited to go to that cuz I know I am. Yeah. And I can't wait to go see them because after this new album has released, the concert is going to be crazy. I it's will say that. It's going to be straight lit. Like people, people are going to be everywhere. Man, it's going to be crazy. I feel like people are going to come from everywhere to come see this. Like we got Young Thug, we got Lil Yachty, 21 Savage, Waka Flocka, and Migos. Oh man, you guys better be ready because that's going to be a crazy weekend. Um, but yeah, Migos, that album was, I mean, it was like a typical, it, it was a lot cleaner production, which I really liked. And the typical Migos sound came Attitude through. Attitude and flow. Just came through like always. It always comes through with that. Like Sounds they, like a much newer, crisper, yeah. cleaner cut Migos than we're used to, but it's all great. It is a great album. They're, they're, um, I like every, every album they keep putting out is more clean and it's just better and better the production. And they're just, I mean, and I, but I still like that they still have that Migo sound that keeps them, that keeps them up to date where people aren't like, oh man, this, this new album, they're, they're whack. They totally fell off, you know? So I really like that about Migos. Okay. So, um, okay. So next we're going to move on to, um, we're going to, we're going to basically, so recently it's, it's not super recent. Well, what what would we normally do after talking discussing Migos? We'd probably play a recent hit, such as like T-shirt by Migos. Yeah, just to yeah, show yeah. The, show everyone what a uh, little bit of what we're talking about. And then after that song, we would move on to a new segment where we talk about a uh, new rapper rapper each week, and we're talking about Anderson Pock today. That's who we decided to talk about first. So, we'll... Anderson Pock, he he's a man of he's. I don't know how to just really describe it. Like, he hits home for me and Bonzo. Like, we were listening to this dude back when he released Malibu. No, not Malibu. Venice. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Venice. Successful album. Yeah. And, I mean, his last, <clears throat> his last album was Malibu. No, great album. Great album. But he, he, like, he has that... He's not like a he's not really like a rapper. He, he like, he's a he's a huge... He's like an R- R&B... Yeah. Like uh, neo soulish types, yeah, and like, man, he's just so good. Like he he was just recently on the XL. What is it? XXL. The freshman XL. The freshman XL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. freshman XL. Um, I think he tops it off. I think he's the best one on the freshman list. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely over like Lil Yachty and Kodak and stuff. But I mean, if you like them, him, them, then that's that's cool too. But I think the Anderson Pac, he just has a such a full sound and his voice is just very very unique voice too yeah it's so good like if you ever listen to a song with him in it you'll you'll and like you there's can a recognize ton of features it immediately. exactly exactly um so who he is he is a uh hip hop rapper slash R&B style guy from uh LA and what he, his flow is just it's very smooth and relaxing and just a very chill just kind of flow and uh rap and everything and he's been he's coming he's on the come up he his first album venice was pretty successful and his second album malibu was very successful and i think it's probably one of the best albums i've heard in the last five years i'm pretty sure i'm actually pretty sure he got signed to um um what's what's dre's what is that interscope Interscope. after interscope Interscope. yeah is that dre's yeah yeah he just got he got signed to that to interscope um after he released his last album malibu which is really cool because I feel like his next album he puts out is going to be, like, amazing. I mean, not that Malibu wasn't. Like, that was a crazy album. It was really good. Um, so now we're going to 
We're going to play you an Anderson Pock song. Just real quick. I mean, the actual show will play the whole thing, but we're just going to play like a we're little bit. We're just going to play a little bit because it's the demo. <clears throat> Either probably something off of Malibu. Yeah, we'll go off Malibu. Um, One of the most uh, successful songs featuring uh, uh, Schoolboy Q. So that's a little snippet of uh, Anderson Pox, um, one of his big hits off of Malibu. So um, now you kind of know what his sound is like and what he's he's all about. Uh, so the next uh, segment we're going to have is basically we're going to talk about um, rappers from different parts of the world. Um, this this week we got, we're going to do uh, we have a classic one we from the classic. golden age of hip hop. Slick Rick. Name Slick Rick. He's from Great Britain. Great Britain. Um, he was a huge commercial success in both America and Britain. And we're going to play one of his hits for you. Uh, one of his greatest hits, Children's Story. And just sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. Enjoy it. Robbing old folks and making the dash. 
They did the job, money came with ease. But one couldn't stop, it's like he had a disease. He robbed another Stick and another, Stick and my sister and a brother. Tried to rob a man who was a DT undercover. The cop grabbed his arm, he started acting erratic. He said, keep still, boy, no need for static. Punched him in his belly and he gave him a slap. But little did he know, the little boy was strapped. The kid pulled out a gun, he said, why'd you hit me? The barrel set straight for the cop's kidney. The cop got scared, the kidney starts to figure. I'll do years if I pull this trigger. So he cold dashed and ran around a block. Cop radios into another lady cop. He ran by a tree, there he saw the sister. Shot for the head, he shot back, but he missed her. Looked around good and from expectations. He decided he hit for the subway stations, but what? she was coming and he made a left. He was running top speed till he was out of breath. Knocked an old man down and swore he killed Sorry. him. Then he made his move to an abandoned building. Ran up the stairs up to the top floor Opened up a door there, guess who he saw? Who? Dave the dope be shooting dope Who don't know the meaning of water nor soap He said, I need bullets Alright, so, um That's a little snippet of Slick Rick Um He still kills it uh, From Britain You know, from the other, from Across the ocean So um, okay, so now our next segment, we're going to move to, uh, sampling, we're going to do this thing called sampling of songs, where basically, um, we're going to take the samples, we're going to show you an actual song, a regular song, and we're going to show you what, uh, cause in, in hip hop, the a sampling is a huge part of yeah, huge huge part of hip hop. Artists part. all the time use samples. This is why this is how hip hop started back in the early nineteen seventies, is when people would essentially just take full songs and just sample them and scratch them up and remake them into their own thing uh, of songs. And it's still a huge part in uh, modern rap today. So people are always using songs, old samples and stuff. So we're gonna play a, we're gonna play a, a sample from a modern song for you today. It's called uh, "Father Stretch My Hands" by Pastor T. L. Barrett. And it was uh, sampled in Kanye West's most recent Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 and Part 2 album or er, uh, songs on the album The Life of Pablo. We're going to actually play you the sample and then we're going to play you the real song so you can hear like how it is sampled in it. So uh, here we go. Father Stretch My Hands by Pastor T.L. Barrett. All right, we're going to fast forward now just a little bit to get to the part that's more sampled in the song.
bit more. the whole song play, but here's the time I say just taking a quick loop. Alright, and now we're gonna play the noon version, uh, Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 by Kanye West from The Life of Pablo for you. It was just on my phone easily right there. Um, okay, so as you can hear easily, uh, there's very obvious samplings of the song Father Stretch My Hands by The Good Pastor, and you can hear it very obviously in Kanye West's version. It's it's a big part of the beat. It's uh, very well uh, shown by the, the sample. Song. And actually, uh, that's a big part of Kanye West's uh Production is his sampling. He samples a lot. Oh, of Kanye stuff. West is the king of sampling in modern hip hop. He al almost all of his beats are made off of great samplings, and he takes his own take on them and everything. And they they are all just fantastic. I think. Yeah, he's really good at putting them all together with beats to uh to really accentuate his uh what he the meaning he's trying to get to. Okay, so um the next part we're gonna the next segment we're gonna get to is uh deep analysis and that's basically gonna be about um we're gonna take a song and like kind of find like the deep a deeper meaning on it um and I mean we gotta go fishing for a song first because uh, this is just the demo so like we we'd, we'd be more prepared we yeah thing. we we'd have the song and then we'd like look up what other people think mixed with our own opinions and we'll give you like a deeper meaning that most people don't really think of when they when they listen to the song okay so what song do you want to do uh do like a do a kendrick lamar song kendrick song yeah do kendrick. like one off section 80 section 80 um we're on a reagan area yeah it's a good Rigor one mortis what do you want do do uh cushion corinthians High power? I feel like high power is good. Yeah, I was about to say high power is good. All right, we're going to play it for you first. High power. Everybody put three fingers in the air. The sky is falling, the wind is calling. Stand for something or die in the morning. Section 80, high power. Come on. 
Martin Luther staring at me. Malcolm X put a hex on my future, someone catch me. I'm falling victim to a revolutionary song. The Serengeti's clone. Back to put you back, stab us back on your spinal bone. You slit your diss when I slit you my diss. You wanted to diss, but jumped on my dick. Grown man never should bite their tongue unless you eat pussy that smell like it's a cell plum. I got my finger on the motherfucking pistol. Aiming it at the pig, Charlotte's web is gonna miss you. My issue isn't televising. You ain't gotta tell the wise how to sound beat because our life's an instrumental. This is physical and mental. I won't sugarcoat it. You'll die from diabetes if these other niggas wrote it. And everything on TV just a figment of imagination. I don't want a plastic nation. Dread that like a Haitian. Why you motherfuckers waiting? I be off the slave ship, building pyramids, writing my own hieroglyphs. Just call it shit high power. Nigga, nothing less than high power. Five star dishes, food for thought, bitches. I mean, this shit is Huey Newton going stupid. You can't resist his high power. Throw your hands up for high power. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. If I see it, I ain't seen it. That will make my parents happy. Sorry, mama, I can't turn the other cheek. They want to knock me off the edge like a fucking widow's peak. Uh, and she always told me, pray for the weak. Uh, them demons got me. I ain't prayed in some weeks. Uh, dear Lord, come save me. The devil's working on. He probably clocking double shifts on all of his jobs. Frightening, so fucking frightening. Enough to drive a man insane. I need a license to kill. I'm standing on a field full of landmines doing the moonwalk, hoping I blow up in time. Cause 2012 might not be a fucking legend. Trying to be a fucking legend, the man of mankind. Who said a black man in the Illuminati? Last time I checked, that was the biggest racist party. So get up off that slave ship, build your own pyramids, write your own hieroglyphs. Just call it shit high power. Nigga, nothing less than high power. Five star dishes, food for dark bitches. I mean, this shit is Bobby Seal making meals. You can't resist his high power. Throw your hands up for high power. Okay, again, we would let that play through on the actual uh, show, but this is recording, so we are going to cut it a little bit short. Okay, so, um, uh, actually, a very, like, a very not well-known uh, fact about that song is that it was actually produced by well-known rapper J. Cole, who, um, I know he, I knew he did produ- production on the side, but I had no clue that he, uh, that he produces. Did you, Bonzo? I had no idea until we researched the song. No clue. Um, so, I mean, the song, you know, it talks about self-enlightenment through reflection and active work. Um, it touches on, like, racial subjects, figures, conspiracy theories. Big, um, big, big part it touches on is separation of the classes. If you look at the song, the way it's written on the actual album track list, it is kind of transferred to the way that it looks like poor we are. And it, it has a it, it touches on the subjects of uh, the separation of the classes and how how um, people from the lower class area have so much less than 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 the upper the one percent and not even just the one percent the middle class too and a b- big part of the song is talking about the separation of the classes it's talking about how um, how poor people are and how that's a big problem and how it's a plague to America. And it just it just is talking about the problem of living in, living in uh, Section Eight ho- uh, houses. Housing from the Housing Act of 1937, which was an act that put together areas where they would put uh, a bunch of low income. Li- yeah, low for low income families, they would put together houses uh, that they could easily afford, and those areas are often turned into like slums or ghettos because it's. Uh, Low income people, yeah. and it's just bad situations for people to be living. And this song just touches on how uh, the, the, there's a huge separation of the classes. Yeah, um, that's pretty much pretty much all there is to that song. Um, I definitely suggest going and listening to it on your own. Uh, just going and listening to it on your own because 
it's a really good song. In fact, just listen to the whole album because Kendrick always pulls through. He always has these deep, meaningful things, which is just really good. Um, so with that, we would like to conclude. We'd like to get to our conclusion. Wait, before, but actually, before we conclude, I would like to state a, a quick announcement. Public service announcement. Quick PSA that um, we actually, um, if there's anybody out there at OU who would like to submit their own songs and own original songs that they, they own original. come up with themselves. Yeah, we'll play them here on the show. Um, I because I mean I'm a music producer and a rapper. We'll we'll, we'll play like a couple every show. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of help ever help a brother out, you know, spread the word. Yeah. Well, uh, I know there's a lot of talent out there, and I, we really want to hear it, and we really want to have a lot of other people hear it too. Um, I, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that are talented and are putting music together in songs because um, I've just been talking to a ton of people and there just seems like there's an endless amount of uh, artists. So um, we're going to we're gonna try to start up a, a Twitter and Facebook account soon. Um, so we'll let you know when that happens. And then we also are... We also... We pretty much... We're just... I mean, we talked to you about Millfest that's coming up here... Where is it? When is that? Not Numbers Fest. A oh, Numbers Fest. My bad. Oh, what is that in June? No, it, April. Oh, April. <laughs> in April. It's the week before finals, and uh, the Saturday show will be featuring Migos, Young Thug, Lil Yachty, and Twenty One Savage, and it is a show to look forward to. I highly recommend you buy tickets early, before the ticket prices increase or eventually sell out. So I know the tickets are going for around forty forty five dollars just for Saturday today, and then the Friday show the headliner would be Walk a Flock of Flame, which is also a great act, and I highly recommend. There's two day tickets available for like sixty sixty five dollars. I highly recommend buying all those. Yeah, exactly. I definitely would too. Okay, so uh, I would like to conclude this. Um, <clears throat> just wrap up the show real quick. Uh, thank you all for listening out there. And, um, there's going to be, we hope to have many more shows to come. And, uh, but before we go, we'll leave you with one last song just to, uh, we'll, we'll do a little throwback to the early days of hip hop, seeing as it being the first show. We'll play some, um, Africa Bambata Planet Rock. He's a he's a big, um, he's a very big crew, pioneer of, of how a lot of hip hop sounds today. Uh, he he actually this song actually was the first song to utilize the 808 kick, which is heard in a lot of raps, like pretty much most raps today. And once again, this has been Beats and MC with Bonzel Trill and and Dalton Pritt. Thank you, and we're out. <laughs> <laughs>